gather together in your name. Father, we just ask that you administer my name in this service today. Father, as we come before the throne of grace, we just ask that you administer to each and every request this morning, spoken and unspoken alike. Just reach down with your hand, show yourself strong, let your people see it, that they may further believe and testify unto these things. And Father, give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Now be with us in the remainder of this service. Come on, Pastor, as he delivers your message to your people. And Father, strengthen us to live in Christ Jesus' name in church. Amen. 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 And now it's time to receive our offering. Remember, the offering place back there, the little grass fans back there in the back. I said grass fan, not grass fan. Amen. Grass fans back there in the back. Uh, so you can drop your offering off and your tithe and offer it off on the way in or on the way out. If you've already dropped it off, I want you to hold your hand up. If you haven't yet, hold your offering up, but hold it up high. Amen. God is so good to us. Amen. And the crazy mess all around us at night study, God is not crazy. Amen. He's our steady force. Let's repeat this. I lift my offering to you that it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. I'm going to leave my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed. Oh, Lord. Again, give the Lord a hand clap. Right. Again, we're going to do this from last week. Y'all did so good last week. You know, it, you know uh, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to practice the right way. Like we did last week. We're doing it again the right way. But we're going to get this. This song here just really really speaks a lot the, the, this version here was the one that Loretta Lynn sang y'all remember that lady named Loretta Lynn okay this was her version there's a whole lot of versions but this was hers uh, but the biggest thing is is that it tells us a very strong story about that God handled your problems amen so here we go again put your hands in Amen. I've been working all week on this message, and 
I started out with one thing, and the Lord gave me three. But about doing three weeks, I wasn't doing one week. But it's, pretty, it's just awesome the way God did this. I just, I, I've been waiting all week for this message. Not all week, because I got the message in the middle of the week, so I've been waiting for the last couple of days for this message. Amen? Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you're like the one on the throne, Father. We know, God, there's nothing impossible for you. Ask you right now, Lord, to help us, God, to lay our concerns, our cares, uh, our anxieties, our fears, lay them at the foot of the cross, knowing, God, that you got this. Ask you right now, Lord, to minister, Lord, to each person here in a very powerful way. Help us, God, to direct our folks to you and your word and not to our problems. That's how we handle them. In the name of Jesus, we love you and we praise your name. The church said, Amen. Amen. Now, let me go on. Can you tell me? Now, let me find out. Let me find somebody to point at them. Find somebody to point at them. And say, if you're not here after what I'm here yeah. after, you'll be, be here after I'm gone. Say it. That's right. If you're not here after what I'm here after, you'll be here after I'm gone. So look. Amen. Yeah. I've heard it so much, I even see it. <laughs> well, well, uh, at the Naval Barracks, the enlisted men will be given their shots prior to going overseas. One lad having received a whole series of injections asked for a glass of water. What's the matter? asked the hospital foreman. You feel lightheaded? He said, I'm just checking to see if I'm still watertight. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's from the new book. Uh, the question is, have you ever been hit so much with what's going on around you that you want to go drink a glass of water and say, you're still watertight? Because all the stuff that's happening in your life. So we're going to talk, talk today about the, the third principle. And then uh, as kids, keep it simple, saints. And it's going to be striving from striving from, from surviving to thriving. It's one thing to be surviving. I hear people all the time say, "How you doing?" They go, "Well, I'm surviving." Well, that's better than saying I give up. But instead of surviving, why not be thriving? Instead of just getting by, why not go ahead and take care of business and get up and get it going? So uh, the one this week here, here it is. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be any more principles. Maybe one more next week, but then we're doing something else. And that is uh, the third principle. We've gone two before. There comes our third, and it is listen carefully. I haven't lost my mind. Follow the three button principle. I know you might think it's kind of out there, but it's all right. But we get going, you understand. Y'all, y'all say it with me. Follow the three bone principle. All right. I was working. I was researching this scripture, not a scripture, but this sermon, and I was looking uh, in one direction. And as I was studying and going through, uh, I happened to come across a very powerful, powerful uh, message. And this was actually with McIntyre, but other people have said it too. And that is, she said, to succeed in life, you need three things. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. That's the three bone principle. Uh, a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. So as I began to think about that, because I was talking about having a backbone in this year, and then these came up. And, and then I said, wait a minute, Lord, it, it kept speaking to me. I just couldn't stay away from it. So then I said, well, Lord, is there a relevant Bible passage for this? I mean, is this biblical? Is there something biblical that can address this and, and, and help out with this? And I said, you know, Lord, I know, Lord, this is the year of transition. This is the year we take things back. Things are getting out of control. Things are being taken away from us. Things are being taken away from the church uh, through COVID. And things are starting to snowball. And now I believe the snowball is getting smaller. And we're getting a chance to take things back. So this is a year of transition. So I said, well, Lord, I... Help me find the passage of scripture that addresses both of these. The year transition and the wishbone, backbone, funny bone. And so here it is. It's in Joshua chapter 1. Talk about transition. And so, so let's just look at this. He said, Have not commanded thee be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Joshua 1 and 9. Let's just go ahead and read that whole. Uh, first nine verses. If you want to look at your Bible, you can, but it's right up here so you can see it, so it's up to you. But Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Joshua 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 1, verse 1.
chapter 1, but Joshua 1, verse 1 through verse 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. I just need you to sit there for a minute and suck that up. Not so much that Moses is dead, but just please just suck it up. Now therefore arise and go over this door. Now therefore arise. In other words, get up. You've been down. They, 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 over a month they had more Moses. But it was more than just Mo, uh, morning Moses for Joshua because now they don't have a leader. And I'm pretty sure Joshua might have been saying, I sure hope you don't pick me. <laughs> so, go over to Jordan, thou and his people, to the land which I do give it, even to the children of Israel. Every place in the sole of your foot shall turn upon that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. For the wilderness of Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, in the land of the high tides. And unto the great sea toward the going down, the sun shall be your coast. There shall be not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For these people shall thou divide for an inheritance land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. I will be thou, second time, strong. And very courageous, thou mayest observe, observe to do according to all law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn out from the right hand to the left, that thou mayest prophet wheresoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou shalt that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee third time? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. Now, he keeps throwing more in each time. But now, be not afraid, be not dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Now, again, I, 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 it's just been in my heart. Once I read this, I couldn't put it down. It just kept, kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. So it just seen in life, and you three things the wishbone, the backbone, and the funny bone. So in order to grow in the Lord, in order to be spiritually successful, in order to get through this year of transition, because I promise you, even as we move forward, there's going to be a lot of things that we were used to is not going to be there. That's the transition. Alright? We need these three bones. And without these three bones, we're going to have a problem. So, so again, and I'm, I, I, I know you say, just keep repeating yourself. I need to repeat myself. If God can do it to Moses three times, I can do it three times. Ready? So, three bone principle. The three most important bones that make up this principle. First is the wishbone. The wishbone is there for dreams and for vision and for hope. Uh, the backbone is there for strength and courage. The funny bone is there humor. We need all three of these and what's happening. Because remember, uh, in hard times, you need these, and the order of this degree might shift and it might change. The priority of each one may vary, but that's okay. As long as you have all three of these in some form or another. So now, here we go. We're here to break it down. Y'all ready to break it down? Somebody say, Lord of Power, Power. Lord of the Plow, Pastor. Lord of Plow. Alright. Here, here we go. Ready? It's all biblical. This is the people like the Irish words. These are God's words. Ready? Time of transition. <clears throat> the Bible said, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, men of Moses, my servant is dead. Y'all say dead. Yeah. So arise, take his place. Wow. <laughs> Not only is the guy who's been leading you for 40 years, is dead. You're going to take his place. Why? So you're not just going to get a walk along with these or try to figure out, I'm telling you, you're going to take his place. Go over to this Jordan, you and all his people, to the land which I'm giving you, the Israelites. So that's Joshua 1, 1 and 2, the Amplified Version. So let's look at this. Moses is dead. Remember the year of transition. Moses is dead. As 
you look around, just like with Moses, things are changing. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed you know, the church survived during COVID because more than ever the churches were on YouTube and on Facebook and all other kind of things. The church was thriving through that and without that the church could not have had a voice because they were shutting us down but we kept getting back up. Things are changing. What happened back then may not ever happen again. Now, he says, now rise. Quit mourning what it used to be. You know, I, I hear all the time, well, we used to, we used to, we used to. What are the good old days? You know what? When I was going through the good old days, they weren't so good. I, I didn't enjoy it. But look, I go stay with my grandma and I have to go outside and go to a pump and do this to get my water, and it's 30 degrees outside. You get your water, if it hits your hand, your hand froze to the bucket before you get in. They were good old days. How many ever used an outside job to say, you ain't gonna see anything? Yeah. They were good old days. My granddad said that's why they made that's why they made Sears and Roebuck catalogs. <laughs> I remember freezing to death, going from one room to the next. There's only had one heater in the whole house. And it was in the center. And that's where you stay if you want to stay warm. And shut all the doors and <coughs> lock off everything. That was the good old days! <laughs> you know what? A lot of things that happened before COVID, you might say were the good old days, but when we were going through it, we didn't think so, did we? So just remember, don't be mourning what is past. But instead do this. Go over, get back into the game, get in now, because it's time of transition. You know, <laughs> some of us, listen carefully, some of us have traded in our vehicle for a hearse. Because all we do is go around and warn about how it used to be. And not how it is now. We're supposed to get the past that we can't have a future because, well, it can just be like it used to be. I promise you, it will never be like it used to be. God knows life is a series of transitions. And with this COVID, I know it seems like it may have weakened the church, but in a lot of ways it strengthened the church and gave it a bigger voice, not necessarily... Uh, in the little community as in the building, but they give it a bigger voice because now we're broadcasting all over the world. We win. Amen? So now, trade in your hearse and get back in God's vehicle. Stand up and rise because God's got something for this church to do now. In this time of transition, God didn't put us here to die. He didn't put us here to put R.I.P. You know, uh, he didn't put us here as a hospice church. You know what a hospice church is? A hospice church is where all the leaders keep all the people happy and comfortable while they die. God didn't call us to be a hospice church. God called us to get up, quit mourning the past, know there's a future, stand strong.
But guess what? It's up to us to excel what God has got for us in this. So watch this. Watch this now. Watch this carefully. Please watch this. God's promises are unlimited. He just said that. Look at all. Every place you step your foot, I've given you. And he said, name it. Wherever you put your foot, you're going to make a difference. God's promises are unlimited. Amen? Amen. Why? Because they're based on his ability. But watch this. Remember, you've got to accept his promises. Watch. Our acceptance is limited. Because it's based on faith in his ability and ours. If you try your best to base your base his promise not on your ability, but on his. Where's the I can't do this, God just really on me. I can't do this, God. Nobody's gonna listen, nobody's gonna pay attention to me. I can't do this, God, and God said, well, who are you listening to? Are you basing your transition? on your ability, because I promise you there's nobody in this place that's got everything together. I promise you, we ain't all got it all together. If you, think, you find one person you think's got it all together and spend one day with you, come back and say, well, I guess I messed that one up. Yeah. We all, we all need God. But I choose to hold on to His promises because they're unlimited. And our acceptance, get all those limits, and I ask God every day, God, help me take the limits off. God, help me take the limits off of you and go ahead and do. You see, God dares us to dream. He dares us to stretch our faith. Remember Peter, and they're in the water, and they're, and, and, and they're sinking? The same thing that was overwhelming them Jesus was walking on top of them. And Peter said, Lord, if I've been to be you, bid me come. And he said, come. In other words, my promise is unlimited. And when he first jumped out, he was having his faith in God's ability. But as soon as he saw the storm, then he went back and thinking about his own ability, and he sank. God, help me. Help me to dare to dream. Y'all say this together. God, help me to dare to dream and to stretch our faith. So first, there's, there, there, there he is. Uh, the wishbone. Now we're going to talk about the backbone. Now the problem of a lot of folks is they've got their wishbone where their backbone should be. And some people got their backbone where their wishbone should be. You gotta give it in the right order. So the wishbone is the dream. It's the trust in God. The backbone is courage. Now, now here we go. It's, it's all biblical. It's right here. I love it. No man should be able to stand before you on the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor save thee. Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may be do according to the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not to the left hand or to the right hand. Wherever you go, you can prosper. Look at that. Can y'all see that? The wishbone without a backbone is useless. I call it riding a skittle wagon. Well, I'm going to be five of my thumbs. Well, you know what I've done, and you know where I'm going, and you know blah, blah, blah. Can you help me? Now, here's what I tell them. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to sit here and blow skittles up your hind part. It's tough. What you've done is bad, or what's happening to you is rough. And it doesn't look good, it doesn't look easy, but with God's help, you can make it through this. It was amazing Thursday night. Thursday night, we went to PCDC and, 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 and Benny said he was going on the F block and the D block. And so I said, you know what? I feel the need to go to D5 first. So I got to D5 
And of course, narcotics anonymous is in there. And so I, so I, so I won't interrupt him. So I told the man, I said, you're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. I'll see y'all guys Monday. As I walk out, one guy raised his hand and said, can I go to the box, which is where we do personal counsel? I said, sure. He got out and I went and put him back in. Another guy said, can I go in the box? The next guy said, can I go in the box? Can I go in the box? And we were there for like two hours and I stayed in the box. But let's go. What happens in the box is people are transitioning God's from their ability back to God's ability. Somebody here today, you need to learn how to transition from your ability back to God's ability. I'm not talking about empty promises and empty things. Backbone. But which comes out of backbone is absolutely useless. He said, I need you to be strong and courageous. You know what that strong and courageous means? Strong, I need you to get some action going. See, a lot of people got wishbone. If they ain't got their backbone, they're just wishing. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go. And I never see it done. I had a man one time, I was passing in the back, and I stopped at a garage where my guys were working. And uh, he owned a garage. I'm in there with him. And, and this guy pops up, and he's working in this guy's car. And, I, and looked at me and said, Pastor, I hear your church is growing. And I said, yes, sir. He said, I was like to have ten thousand dollars for a building fund. I said that'd be nice, but I don't see where it's coming from. He said, "I'll write you a check. I'll, I'll have you a check next week." I said to myself, "Okay." And then he went, "Okay." He cranks up his car and leaves. When he leaves, the guy who my church said he told me that same lie to every preacher. In this community. He said, he ain't got $10,000 to be had, he wouldn't give it. He says, don't expect a check. Never saw him again. But, as a pastor, I hear all the time what we can do. Here's what's going to happen. Now, this year, this year's going to be different. This year, I'm going to work in the church. This year, I'm going to take a Sunday school class. This year, I'm going to do such and such. And then when it's time to do it, you go, well, I'm not feeling good, and I'm not sure if I got it, blah, 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 blah. And so, same old people do the same old thing because nobody else will step up because there's a whole lot of wishbone. Where's the backbone? I know that's tough, but it's the truth. Where's the backbone? He says, be strong and courageous. Let's see some action. And back up your action with some attitude, the good attitude. If you don't have attitude, you're not going to be able to do any action. You got to know God's got this. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. I was in the hospital praying for somebody in Greenville Friday, and I won't go into this where a lot's going on. But one of the people I was in there with that people, I haven't seen them since they were in the hospital several years back before COVID. And when I was in there, the person was facing death, and God healed that person. And I gave him a God's got this, Team Bethany bracelet, before COVID. Or right around COVID, sometime, sometime there. I just got, just got the bracelets. This person's praying for their husband, and she goes to put her hand on his shoulder, a little on her arm. And she said, told her husband, said, God's got this. It's powerful. Let your attitude and your action speak loudly. Amen? And then here's the crazy thing. He repeated it three times. Why did he repeat it three times? Number one, Joshua got some big shoes to fill. Can you imagine following Moses? I couldn't even think about it. I couldn't think about following Joshua. Moses. says, Moses, he got big shoes to fill. And so anxiety's got to beat him up. He's down. He, he, he's mourning. But not only is he mourning, I believe because of the way God handled it, he was hesitating to get up. None of us ever hesitated to help 
Mm. <clears throat> and so he told him, be strong, be courageous. You got this. I'll be with you. He tells him again. But he adds, very courageous. But then he turns around and says, do not be afraid or dismayed. He just keeps adding stuff each time. If you see in the Bible where words repeated multiple times by God for somebody, it's because he wants to make sure the emphasis is expressed by God that it's a promise, it's going to happen, you can trust it. So first he was attacking anxiety. Not only was he attacking anxiety, this is just me, it didn't say it in the Bible, but I believe he was attacking Satan, because Satan will talk to you and tell you you can't do it, give you all the reasons why you can't do it. How can you get up after Moses? do this job. Moses, everybody trusted Moses. I don't know if they're going to trust you. You're so young. Moses was so old. And he's hearing talk from Satan, but then there's self-talk. You know what? He's probably right there. They're not going to listen to me. They can care less. They're not going to get him to go across the stand because they, they want to stay here. That's why God buried Moses and nobody, not even Satan, knows where he's buried. You know why? Because if he had been buried in a mausoleum or a mountaintop, that's where people would have stayed. They'd have made a shrine out of his burial place. And it would not have moved forward. So three times he told them, be strong, be courageous. You see, our backbone assists our wisdom. Did you know that? First it gives us stability, you know, back to back and forth. I know how to be strong, and I don't have to bounce back. Willie, won't he? Willie, won't he? Willie, won't he? Willie, won't he? I can, I can, I can, I can. No. It gives me stability. No, it gives me stability. It gives me support. Because I'm going to stand. And I know, I say I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. Yeah, I've been to B5 before. And there was 12, 13, 14 guys, and they're all ages. There was guys in there that said they one had a doctor's degree, one didn't even work. Uh, these guys were in there, and they were black and white, and Hispanic, and they were just all in there, big and little. And because of something that happened the night before, this guy beside me, who was big as a house, was listening to the guy that was about the size of a chihuahua compared to him. Start saying, well, you, 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 and they stood up and they started meeting in the circle. And instead of calling the guards, I just stood in the middle of them. I just stood up. Of course, it didn't hurt because I was bigger than both of them. <laughs> and I put my hand here, and I put my hand here. And I said, this is not going to happen today. Now you can go sit down and play pretty, or you can go to D block, which is isolation. I wanted to say, okay, y'all can kiss and make up now, but I didn't. That would not have gone, that would not have been good. And they sat down and we went up to the class. And afterwards, they both apologized to each other and they apologized to me. I believe that day. God was using and gave me back home. And when I stood between them and said, this is not going to happen today. There was the stability and there was the support. Also spring, <coughs> if you keep a backbone, you're going to be a man of action. Not just talk, a man of action. So stability, support, spring, action. You're going to do something. Now, I did a study, hey, this is crazy, funny funny. I found out that some of the greatest evangelists of all time, D.L. Moody, some of the other guys, I can't remember all the guys' names right now, but uh, Spurgeon, I found out that all these guys, there was, there was two things they had in common. Number one, or several things, number one, they were called on God. Number two, they stood strong on God. Number three, they affected a lot of people. But there was something else they all had that I didn't know until so I was researching this. Every last one of them had a very powerful sense of humor. Matter of fact, I said D.O. Moody had to calm his down. 
And it's all about this. And it was researched by these guys out there. They preached to all these people, thousands of people. They come back and, and they would have a good old time joking and carrying on and telling jokes and, and just how much fun these guys had. It hit me. That's how they affected so many people. They weren't always so stiff. But they didn't have to be stiff, but they also didn't have to be limber. So, so, so the funny one, here it goes. The book of law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on the day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you deal wisely and have good success. Have I not commanded you to be strong, vigorous, and very courageous? There's the third time. Be not afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you, wheresoever <laughs> thou goest. Watch this. Be not, which means. Don't mean that's going to hit you. It's going to hit you. But be not means don't live in it. You can't keep a bird from landing on your head, but you can't keep that bird from building a nest. Be not. Don't live in a continual state of being first afraid. The word afraid means to be harassed, full of dread. And dismay means to break down by confusion or fear, to be or make afraid, to be beat down, to be discouraged, to go down, to scare, to terrify. So, so how do we handle that? You've got the wishbone, you got the backbone, but how do you handle that? And that's where the funny book comes in. Y'all know what it is? Somebody tell me what it is, besides crazy. What's that clown doing? Why? So the, so the, so the crazy guy that was riding can get up and go, that didn't work so good. <laughs> a backbone without a funny button can be very painful. I remember the first time back in Benson when we buried people, most of our people were buried that they were actually had their services in the church. And honestly, I had never been anywhere we had services in the church. Now we do a lot. We have a lot of services here in the church. And that's fine. But back there and back in that day, early in the ministry, all I'd ever seen was Paul Funeral Home. All funeral home, Wilkerson funeral home, Cotton funeral home. That's all I had seen was that. So we go to Benson, and a man in our community had died. And that morning, we put him in and sit in the front, not sitting there, lying in the front. I go and get DC and Danny from school. We're driving up, and we had to pass by the church to go to Parsons because Parsons right behind the church. And as we get by the church, DC said, Stop. So I stop. DC's about 12. Daniel's about 9. And DC's dad says, Dad, Daddy, we can't go any further. I said, What is wrong with you, DC? He said, There's a dead man in our church. I said, I know so. He said, We've never had a dead man. I said, DC, it's okay. I helped put him there this morning. He said, but Daddy, there's a dead man in our church. And Daniel was the rodeo found that day. Daniel looked over at D.C. and put his hand on his shoulder. And said, don't worry, D.C., we have four or five someone in front of you every Sunday. Nobody ever notices. <laughs> For all those that think to be a Christian and have me have which one in the back when you gotta walk around like this. Go in the oh, I'll give you a dare. Go into B5 doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be your last trip. Hope you'll make that out. Mm -hmm. Get a funny one. 
Learn how to take things live. Laugh at yourself. If you can't think of anything else to laugh at, look in the mirror. I promise you. What's this? You go for it, bro. Let it rip. <laughs> you know what that's the sign of? That's the sign of a church that's alive. Amen. When you cease to hear babies make noise in church, you cease your church is dying. We're not a hospice church. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Get the Lord ahead. We're not a hospice church. Okay. But you know what? There's nothing any cuter than part the little baby's lips and putting that pacifier in your mouth. <laughs> but it does get discouraging when you got a part of lush tax to do it. <laughs> I said, sure, Daniel. I called the school and I said, look, 
He's got three, three tests. He said, so he's got three tests. Can you please just let him go to each class, take his test, go to the next class, take his test, go to the next class and take his test. They said, Daniel had to be here today for his test. I said, Daniel wants to be there. And let him know what he done on his test. And a couple hours later, just a couple hours later, Daniel comes up and looks at me and hugs me and says, Danny, I passed all three. I graduated. He said, I finished what I started. And he walked in to his mama. I was with him. And he put his hand on her forehead. And he got to her ear and he said, Mama, we done it. You always wanted to know that we graduated. Today, I can tell you, we done it. One of the most powerful moments in my entire life, ever. I get a break in this break up the break it up just a little bit right now. Look at this one right here. One thing I did, I was like saying, you know a good car driver. <laughs> His back's out of joint. <laughs> Kind of like a giraffe, gets a chair, gets a sore throat, he's out of business. Humor helps people connect with other people at all times. And in many ways, with other things, might not connect. And it helps you from drying up and blowing away. Get ready to close. Brandy, come on up here. Get ready to play something. We all need a wish about a vision, a dream, something to provide motivation as a goal for us to strive, something to strive for. Secondly, we need a backbone, have some gumption, some fortitude, some stick to itness, something to keep you going when things get tough, and the toughness to stand your ground in the face of opposition. And finally, we all need a funny moment. Have a sense of humor, a willingness to look for the silver lining in every dark cloud. Something to keep a smile on your face when you want to run, hide, and cry. I was in counseling class. And a guy was telling me about humor. And at the time, I didn't think much about humor when I'm counseling. And he said, let me give you an example. I said, okay. And he said, one time this guy got in a motorcycle accident. While he was unconscious, they had to remove both of his legs. And he said, it was his job to go tell him when he woke up. So he woke up. And the pastor said, I got some good news and some bad news for you. He said, what's the bad news? He said, your legs were so damaged in the motorcycle accident, they had to remove your legs. He went, oh, good God. What's the good news? He said, see that man in the bed next to you? He said, yeah, he wants to buy your boots. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. See those soldiers.
not saying change your ethics. Do not change your ethics. The Word of God is true no matter what. Just because the church down the road says blah, 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 doesn't mean that we got to blah, 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 whatever it is, we have goes against the Word of God because when God has His ethics, the Ten Commandments were not Ten Suggestions. They were Ten Commandments. The world is changing. Ethics are going haywire. What's good is called bad now. What's bad is called good. But Malachi says our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today is the day with wishbone, backbone, and a funny bone. You're not here by mistake. You didn't travel to some time capsule and now you're stuck here. No. God put you here for this purpose, for this time, to make a difference. Stand. Stand. Be strong. Be courageous. God is fixing to show something. I don't know what scale it's going to be on. But it's going to show itself in a very strong way. It may be to a remnant, it may be to more, but it's going to show itself. And I want to be in that number. Let's all stand. <clears throat>
I've lost my wish now. On my backbone, on my funny bone, because of all this junk we've gone through and all these attempts to shut us down. I just pushed my wishbone, funny bone, backbone aside. How many would be bold and say, I pushed them aside. I'm ready for God to help me get them back. Just put that hand up. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Let's pray together. Father, you're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. There's nothing impossible for you. Nothing impossible. I thank you, God, for your everlasting promises. We can stand on them. They are true. They will not fail us. You said you would not fail to Joshua. You would not forsake. Which means you would not leave him physically saved. You would not leave him physically or emotionally. And I'm claiming that same promise right now. Thank you, God, for not leaving me physically or emotionally. I stand on your word. Refresh my spirit. Refresh my wishbone, my backbone, my funny bone. I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Don't give the Lord a hand clap. God is awesome. All the time. God is awesome. Just a curiosity. How many of you really ever put a towel around your neck? I did that. Up, up, and away. The older people aren't going to walk, but the younger people aren't going to what I'm talking about. One of my heroes was Mighty Max. Here I come to save the day, but the mighty mouse is on the way. Now, Jesus is my hero. Wow. Let's say the Lord's Prayer which flows. No man's brother Lane to dismiss us in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the Amen. Father God, we thank you for once again allowing us to be part of thy day, Father. We thank you for the sunshine and sunlight. We thank you for the message you received today. We pray that the